Hello, everybody. It is Friday, June the 2nd. We're ready for month six of Homeward Bound. I have mine on the wall behind me. As you can see, I'm uh, making progress. The uh, I'm at month 10. I'm almost done month 10. I have one more right behind my head there. You can see the, the large applique little block. That's a four by 10 inch finished size applique. I've almost done that. I'm, that. I do the hand applique at night sitting in my comfy chair pretending to watch TV. And I have just the one more. I have four more of those little petal leaves to stick on there. And now don't look too close at mine because mine is going to be unique. There was a cutting mistake in month 10. And I discovered it last week after I had cut the stems three and a half inches for when I should have cut them five. So, and of course I had machine applique them in place already on those four long appliques. There's some of them are three and a half for the small squares, but the long ones are not. So we're getting the pattern changed. The, the correction when we get to month 10, which is in October, uh, the pattern will be uh, correct for all, for all of you. But I had appliqued by machine those stems on those long, long rectangles. And I thought it would take me, you know, it was going to take at least an hour to pick that all out. And I finally decided, nope, I'm leaving them and I will, mine will be unique and I will cover up the end that was too short uh, with a berry. So that's what I'm doing, but mine will definitely be different from uh, the original quilt and all of that. So, but like I said, we're getting that fixed. Uh, that's for month 10. So, uh, but it's coming along, and then the only thing I will have left to do after this, and with any luck, you'll, well, I don't know if you'll see it in the next one that we do. Maybe, it uh, depends, maybe, <laughs> um, but quite a bit. The months 11 and 12 are the outer border, and there are cabins in it, and then there are um, really pretty colored strips. Uh, that make a really pretty pieced border on the outside. So those we will do for months 11 and 12, but uh, I'm really anxious to get this one all taken care of. So uh, if it's not ready by our next live, it will certainly be ready. You'll see it the live after that. Um, anyway, so that's how that's coming along. And of course I have uh, the kit fabrics pretty much are what I've used for the appliques, but I used a different background fabric because I needed to start this well before I got my um, border. Uh, my kit fabric, which I didn't receive till the middle of November. Uh, and I did get started on this toward the middle of September, but I had just had to buy a different background. I had a jelly roll of Tula Pink fabrics, that those same ones that are used. So I was able to get started pretty much and have that done. Um, so this month, um, given everybody a, a, just a couple of more minutes, um, yeah, I'll kill time for another couple of minutes just to see if we get everybody on board here. And of course, these are always recorded and you can go back and look at them for as often as you would like. Um, yesterday was my birthday and it was, uh, I have always said all my life that the best birthdays end in a nine and the worst birthdays end in a zero. So this one was a nine. And I am uh, milking it for all that it's worth. I had a great day yesterday with family and friends and um, put a lot of pictures on Facebook and uh, that kind of stuff and, and shared some good pictures that I had for, for that. And got dressed up fancy in a really neat, neat outfit that I haven't been able to wear for 20 years. And I took that outfit out of the closet and went, well, there's no way this is going to fit but I'll try anyway. And it fit like a glove. It was perfect. My husband's eyes got really big. He did. That's the one that's you wear that. So um, anyway, so that, that was fun. And then we had our two grandchildren, Stella's birthday's today, and she is eight today. And uh, some of you met Stella last uh, time we did a live, she was here and she keeps asking me, have all your friends seen me? Uh, yes, yeah, Stella, my friends all around the world have seen you. So um, anyway, she was fun. She was with us at a real nice dinner last night. Um, so that was great. And her baby brother, who's four and a half, um, Sam, he's just an adorable child too. So of course, everybody thinks their grandchildren are the most adorable. Uh, anyway, so we had a really good time. And um, continuing on, um, this is, I'm uh, going to have a really great year with this year that ends in a nine. Um, okay, so this month for month six, we're back to piecing, which is great. You know, I'm a piecer at heart. That's what I do. And so it is really terrific to get back to do piecing. So we start making the, the pieced borders. 
And um, so the, we're made, well, in month five was we start the peace borders. Now we're going on to the um, stars for the whole quilt. So um, that's what we're working on. And I'm going to switch to the document camera. But I'm going to, if you're not following my blog, I strongly recommend that you look at the blog. I, I found the instructions this month as far as the fabric selections, particularly for those of us, the 450 of us using the kit, trying to figure out which fabrics to use where. It just, or how many, how many stars, there's three different stars, two are small, one's large. And I just found it confusing. So I broke it down on my blog and my blog is how I write to you and tell you the tips and the things that I find helpful. We never change a pattern from a designer and, ch and change her instructions or her words. But my blog is my chance to say, okay, you have the instructions, but this is how I did it. And there's lots of ways to do all of this stuff. So it's not just a matter that I, I know the only other way. Anyway, but the blog is where you'll get um, me telling you person. It's somebody told me um, on my trip in Texas here a couple weeks ago, she felt like she had, I was her personal teacher that when she read my blog each month and when she watched these videos that per, I was the personal teacher just taking her through and answering her questions as she went. So, um, and that's what I strive to do. So I hope that uh, that you will take advantage of that. Uh, okay, so the, well, I'm gonna switch now to the document camera so we can actually look at these things and you can see them up close. So let's get in there. Let's see if we're there. Okay, where are we? Here's my hands. We got this. Okay, so the first thing is that we're making these, there's star A and star B, all right? So this is star B. Star A is exactly like this. It has a different border, uh, has the, um, uh, oh, it has the ladybugs with the navy, the blue background in it. And it has the star points that are um, the, the peach color. So that's what star A looks like. That's what star B looks like. And again, on my blog, it tells you exactly how many of each one of these to make. Uh, I found it confusing to understand in the pattern. So I've just broken it out for you right there. So, um, but the other thing to be aware of is that the way the pattern are written, patterns are written, and most times this is the, all right, John says my camera's not quite focused enough. Let's see if we can get a little better in there. Get, to it autofocus here. All right, that looks better to me. Okay, so, but the way that the pattern is made, these star points are not made as mine were, which is a flying geese unit, flying goose. The It's made with a seam down the middle. It's made from two small half square triangles. So these half square triangles are much too large, but it's it. I took them so you could see the idea. So if you were using the half square triangles method, as the pattern is written, Okay, you're going to make the star points, which is this little shape right into this unit, two small triangles and the larger background triangle. You're going to make those from half square triangles. Yes, these are too big. You would make smaller ones and the pattern tells you what size. If you're going to do it this way, that I recommend, and, and Sarah does too, she had a little video that she showed this where I saw it, that you press one of the seams down toward the dark color and one of the seams up toward the light color. And that way, this is the one I, I repressed, but it didn't have a real hot iron, so it didn't go. But when you stick those together, then you don't have a lot of bulk right there. You have one going down and the other one going up. And so that is going to give you a little less bulk right there at a place that you could have a whole lot of a great big mushy bump if you had them both going down toward the dark, which is what most of us would do. We would press this square, the seam down toward the purple. Now that's going to make a big bulk here. So you want half going in one direction and half going in the other if you're using that method. The other thing to mention about this method right now is that um, we, I won't say we, uh, one of our members discovered a, a cutting error in month six for the pattern instructions to do these half square triangles the way the pattern says to do them. Now the good, there's a lot of kind of mistakes that can be made in cutting and the almost the worst ones are when they tell you to cut the wrong size and they always tell you to cut it too small, not too big, or they tell you to cut twice as many as you need instead of what you need. Well, fortunately it wasn't that mistake, but, and we have updated the pattern, but if you printed the pattern on May 31st or early, say in the morning of yesterday, June 1st, then the pattern on page two has the incorrect number of 
background squares that you would need to make all of these little triangles. They are, it says to cut 40 squares. In fact, you need 80 squares. So we have updated the pattern. If you hadn't printed it before, say noonish or so yesterday, you'll be just fine. There is a sticky topic that I put on the forum immediately. I do want to thank Linda, who is uh, Lehab375 on the, um, she brought it to our attention. I was having breakfast early, early yesterday morning before going out for my walk when I read that, that there was a, a she called it a typo, but it was um, an in, it was a mistake. And I, I just wish I could tell you how many hours I had spent last fall uh, trying to edit this and reading everything. And it's hard to check a pattern when you're not sewing it, when you're just working with paper and a pencil and a calculator. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I, I missed it, that I miscounted that it said 40 when in fact it needed to be 80. So if you are doing that method, um, you would quickly discover that you're going to have a heck of a lot more of your star points triangles than you would your background triangles. And so, yes, you would need more squares that then cut into half. So, but we've picked, fixed the pattern. It's all up to speed and it's only page two. If you decide you're going to reprint as I did yesterday, all I did was reprint page two and that made everything right. So that is certainly a way that you could do it. That would just, if you make it with the half square triangles, there's an additional seam right here between uh, at every one of these star points. So I'm a, a fan of flying geese. I love flying geese. And the way I like to make flying geese the most is making four at once. So on my blog, I have some detailed pictures and instructions, but I also have a complete tutorial of how to make flying geese four at once. And there are many videos you can find as well. You can Google four flying geese at once or lots of things like that. And you can find the right uh, information, but I have a tutorial on mine. Mine's not a video. It's a, I'm a woman of many words. So I have put the words out there for you. So I've got the instructions and the, the sizes that you need. One of the things that is really, that I learned a tip that I love to teach in classes, whenever it, it comes about that we need it. There are a lot of patterns that tell you to cut a square and so a draw with a pencil, a diagonal line from corner to corner, and then sew a quarter inch on either side. And that would be true for these little squares as well. The squares, the size that these squares need to be for this method to get the size geese that we need. And here's, he hasn't been trimmed yet. I'm going to demonstrate trimming of this one in just a minute. But this size is going to be, this is a two inch finished by a one inch high flying goose. That means it needs to be two and a half, including seam allowance, and one and a half this way, including seam allowance. So this one's too large. We're going to trim it down. In order, the size that you need for these little star point squares is two and one eighth. So you could cut a whole bunch of these little tiny squares and then using your mechanical pencil, carefully draw a diagonal line from point to point so that you were ready to go. But I learned some months, a couple of years ago, so well, probably several years ago now, the way time flies, that a smarter, faster way to do this is simply to figure out how, what size square do I need to get four of these? And so two and an eighth plus two and an eighth is four and one quarter. So this pink fabric, which is going to be star points or peachy color, was cut four and a quarter. My blog gives you these inf absolutely instructions right down to the wire, exactly what size you need. Then you can simply take a ruler and carefully draw that diagonal line from point to point and point to point carefully because you want it to be as accurate as possible. Once you've drawn those, you simply lay your ruler on here and it's two and one eighth, not two and a quarter, it's two and an eighth. You make sure that you've got the eighth line right there. And you can check that it's correct because you're, when you rotary cut this, you should cut exactly right down that X in the middle. So I would cut this one in half at two and an eighth, and then I would move the ruler to here and come across here and do two and an eighth this way. And voila, in less time than it took me to explain it to you, you have four of these small squares with the pencil line already um, drawn. I wish I could take credit for this. I saw it on the internet some, somewhere and just was so excited. I couldn't wait to get into the classroom in the next couple of days when I was doing something that used this exact method and said, oh, you people are just going to love this so much. 
So anyway, so that is um, a fast way to draw this. And regardless of whatever the sizes are, if the size told you you needed it's two and seven eighths, you add two of those together, two and seven eighths and two and seven eighths, and that gives you uh, five and three quarters. And that would be the size squared to draw it, because it's just real estate. It's here's a two and an eighth, there's a two and an eighth, there and there. Okay, so that's the way. Now I do have lots of pictures on the video of, of on the blog on how to do this, um, making all of these things. And I had this all laid out, but then I had to start using them. So here's, you know, we're gonna make this this way and you're gonna start with the background square and the blog tells you the size to cut the background square, it's three and a half. And then once you've sewn these a quarter inch on either side, we press up toward, uh, uh, now I make it a heart. I call it the heart method. Once you press this seam, up now it kind of looks like a heart and you would take your other square and you've cut this in half so now there's several sets of these and I put this guy over here and I would have another one and then again a quarter inch on either side all the way down you split that in half and they look like this okay so here it is after it's been sewn alrighty so there we go that's one and this is two I make mine oversized so then I can trim to perfection. I could tell you the numbers, the measurements to cut this exactly, exactly what size for the background, exactly what size for these peach things. But if you do it exactly, then you must do everything exactly right. That pencil line has to be perfect. And then you have to sew it exactly a quarter of an inch on either side. That's way too much exactly for me. So I oversize these pieces. Um, Sally Collins calls this oversize and custom cut. Another teacher called it make it big and whack it off. So the it's the same idea. So these are too large at the moment. And Susan Skeel, I hope that you're happy uh, that you're watching right now. She sent me an email first thing this morning and asked me to sh demonstrate how to cut this. And I said that I would in our live this morning. And she also posted on the forum. Susan, Susan is great about posting on the forum. And her goose is too big. She laid it next to a, um, a this adorable little center, our little ladybug center. And she says, what now? It's not the right size. And in fact, it is not the right size because it is too large. It was too large intentionally. So I'm going to show you how I trim these down. So if you had the block lock flying geese rulers, which a lot of people love, if you had one that's this exact size, and this is a finished two inch wide by one inch high, that means that with seam allowance, it needs to be two and a half by one and a half. And if you had that particular block lock ruler, you just simply put that in place and bingo, your trim around the four sides and you're good to go. But I don't have that exact size block lock. I have a much larger one, but I've got wonderful rulers and I can use these to, to work. So the only thing you have to, to think about is what size do I want to have this? What width? It's two and one half. What is half of two and a half? That's one and a quarter. So I start by putting this 45 degree line and all squares have a 45 degree line that comes out of the corner to the other corner. I'm gonna put the 45 degree line on that 45 seam and I'm going to put the one and a quarter mark. So here's one, here's one and a quarter. I wanna put that one and a quarter right there. I call this the cleavage. If there's any men looking, it's, it's anatomically, it's a cleavage, okay? Then I'm putting that quarter, I'm going to make sure that my diagonal line is correct here, and then I'm at one and a quarter. Let me get in front of it, make sure I'm, before I trim this, because I need this guy. I got one couple more of these little geese to make. Okay, the other thing you're looking at is another guide, a checkpoint to make sure you have it correct. If these seams are sewn accurately, and where you can go astray is if you didn't sew this straight. If it kind of moves all over the place and where it's not straight, what you also, what I'm looking for as well, if this is one and a quarter here, I also want the two and a half up there at that point. So that's just another guide for me to look to make sure that I've got this the right size before I cut it. Okay, so get this here. I'm going to stand up. going to come straight over and then straight this way. Get those out of the way. 
All right, so I've got that a little much out of the way. Now I'm gonna turn it around 180 degrees. The first cut is important because it gets us started correctly. The second cut is critical because it's gonna determine what size this is. So now I put the two and a half line over here. I've just, this is the side I just trimmed. So I need to be two and a half to there and one and a half down here at the bottom. And if I'm living right, I've got the one and a quarter um, midpoint right there and I want to go there and I can see I'm probably off just a skosh so I'm going to move that back and trim it again so I want to make sure that I am going to have a quarter of an inch from that point up to the outside edge and right there I do that's exactly where it needs to be so I'm going to come straight up and straight over okay all right so I often say I'm willing to waste this much fabric for this much perfection, okay? Then you can double check yourself again. And I can see that I'm slightly wider at the bottom. So now I've got this checked again. I'm at, here I'm one and a half this way and two and a half this way. Let's see if there's anything left. And I've got the diagonal line in place right there. I'm gonna come over here, all right? And yes, I schnibbled off that teeny tiny little bit there. Now I have a 100% accurate goose that is two and a half, including seam allowance wide by one and a half right. And now Susan, when you get yours trimmed and you put this together, you're going to see that it is going to fit exactly right. The great thing for me about this method is that you make four geese at once. And when you have a sawtooth star like this, how many star points do we need? One, two, three, four, eight. There's eight points. But when I make them from geese and I have this, I need four of those. So doing it this way, each set of these makes the star points I need for one star. It just, it mathematically, it makes sense to me. I can count it quickly. I can do the numbers and figure out what I need. And I've wasted this much fabric and that is fine with me because you probably already know I have a sinful amount of fabric. And the kit is already, has plenty of fabric in here. So that is not a, a problem at all. So, so there's the story on stars A and B. Okay, this is star B. And this one will be a star A. And of course, there's little squares that go on the corners, background squares and that kind of thing. So that part, I don't know any good use for this other than making dog beds. And I don't do that, so I throw those away. All right, then let's get to um, the bane of my existence. All right. That's these friendship stars. Ever since I've been a baby quilter back a long time ago, I have tried to make this, uh, this star somewhat unsuccessfully most times. And I know some people just love this star and use it a lot. I have, I didn't have, I used to have the Tri-Rex set of rulers. And when I gave up on the star, I got rid of those Tri-Rex rulers. But the Tri-Rex rulers do work. They are correct. Someone the very first day posted, and I'm, I'm sorry I didn't pay attention to her name, but she had posted that she used a 60 degree ruler to cut these background triangles right here. The ones that get off of there, you okay? The ones that go here and have the two star point fabrics on. This is not a 60 degree angle. It's sort of close to maybe, but it is not a 60 degree angle. And she cut all of her star point or her backgrounds, I'm sorry to say, using a 60 degree ruler and they're not the right size and it won't work. But the Tri-Rex does work. If you, and so a lot of people use the Tri-Rex rulers. These are Sarah's version of the Tri-Rex rulers and they're designed for this exact size, this little section right here um, to make this particular block. And this is the larger star. Our small ones are four inches finished. This large one is six inches finished. So if you had the accessory kit, you would have these templates that Sarah has made. And you could hand piece them. They've got the little holes in there if you wanted to put your dots for hand piecing or machine piecing. And they do have these, the real important little things, which are the, the edges that are, you know, cut off. Oops, I'll slide it up here a little bit. Okay. And so that they will make this fit just right when you go ahead to make the um, next part. So to cut the... And the pattern tells you exactly what size to cut all of these fabrics. The, this one, this is for the star points units, okay? So they would go on there and you would trim around these. 
I wrote in my blog, I'm, I'm rarely successful with this, and this is a clear example that you can see what's going to happen here. This point is going to be, we say chopped off, but it's not chopped off, it's hidden, okay? It's still, the point's still there, you're just not going to be able to see it because it's stuck in the middle there. This one's going to be fine, okay? These two, they're going to be fine, but I always meant these, that one's terrible, that's not going to make it right there. Um, that one's okay, that one's way down. I... I don't know what, and and they don't really, I don't have a great one. I don't have one great one. I tried to make them. If I was going to do these, a lot of these, and I only needed to make the four of these, so I just made them and they'll, they are what they are. Um, but if I were making them, what I would do for, because I, I'm, I like paper piecing is I would simply draw this out on paper and I would paper piece these little sections right there. It would be a little, an extra step, but it, I know I would be successful with it. Unlike this, which and I don't understand why it is. It's just, I, I, you know, I, I, I can piece Mariner's compasses and double wedding rings and really complicated stuff. This one just does it in. I, I must have a mental block against it, whatever. So, but anyway, now if you don't have the accessory kit, no problem, because this month the pattern includes these two exact shapes. So you have to make them yourself, make them out of template plastic or cardboard, but template plastic would be a little bit better, but you have to make them as accurately as you can off the pattern page when you cut them, when you draw it, first of all, and then cut them out um, and then trim these little edges and use those as you trace around your shapes. So uh, again, the large triangle is for the background fabric and the small one, and you want to cut two at once. These are reverse mirror images, which means that this one is a, is a lefty and this one is a righty and you need a left and a right. Because we're using a solid fabric that's exactly the same on both sides, it doesn't matter. But normally it would matter when you're using a print. There's no doubt it would matter if you used a print. So you put the two layers together and it doesn't matter if it's wrong sides together or right sides together and cut two at once. So this is gonna give me two this way and then you would flip this one over and this would give two the other way and you'd work your way down the strip and the pattern tells you what size strip and how many of these you need and all of that. So so that's the gist on that. So, um, you know, most people think that professional teachers and, and professional quilt makers like um, I consider myself that we never make mistakes and I'm here to tell you we make mistakes all day long. We just don't show them to you. We don't tell them to you, we, we fix them. Um, I have given up on fixing these and I may give it one more try, but chances are I probably won't. Um, but it's just from six feet away, you, I don't think you'll notice it. Anyway, so that's the story on that. And I think that's everything I wanted to show you right here. Um, yes, I, my note to myself says, show you my not so good friendship stars. It's called a friendship star. It's a great little star. Uh, if I could make it really great, I think I'd like it very well. So, but I don't. So, okay, so let's go back to the webcam now. I will be looking for your questions um, in a few minutes, but when we get to the end. So uh, if you have the questions, be, be putting those up there and I'll take a peek in a minute. Okay, so uh, what I'm working on right now, as I mentioned, is the month 10 borders. And so I give you, those of you who take time to watch this, uh, live, whether you watch it live as, you, as some of you are doing now or, or some of you join us later when you can have time to look at it. I give you some extra bennies for being here because um, I'm glad that you're taking time to, to see these. You know, I write the blog and we do these and, and if, if nobody reads them, I can't help with, with the information that I want to give you. But so once you get these stars done, and some of you will knock these out, some of you already have, you know, and it's only June 2nd. Once you have a month six done with these stars and you want something else to do, you can start working on that next outer border. And I'm going to take one off the wall right now so that you can see what I'm talking about. All right. So, and I'm not going to go back to the, the document camera, but they, they are the same size as the month five, which you did. But there are more of them. In month five, there were two large, here we go. Use my, use my shelf. All right. 
So there were two sets of large, in month five, there were, come on, come on, come on, all right. There were two large, in month um, 10, there are three sets. So you see, I've got three there and three there, and then you got the little guys on the end, and then we're gonna have some, um, Cute little berry, a berry on the end of a stem with some little leaves. We got a star. We got a star. And oh, then we got this middle. And this is what I was talking about. That I'm not supposed to have berries there. Come back here. You're not supposed to have berries there. You're going to have a stem. You will have bur have a stem across there because we're fixing the pattern. But I was just determined. I was not taking those um, three and a half inch stems off there and replacing them with five inch stems. I was just going to cover them up. So I've changed. Mine is unique. It'll be the only one in the world that looks like this. Uh, but that was my solution to how to, to fix that. So anyway, but this, and you can use the patterns and you use the, if you're using the kit, the fabrics listing that tells you it for month 10, which fabrics to use. It's very easy. My month five, because I had to start way early, has a variety of fabrics and I didn't play along and do it like I should have if, if I was following the pattern with the lights on one side and the darks on the other. You can clearly see the light side and the dark side here. Um, but anyway, so, um, but that, if you need something extra to do, I'm here to tell you, you can get started on making these pieced portions of it. You won't get the pattern for the appliques until month 10, but Starting in month seven, we're going to hit that big wide applique border and you're going to have plenty of work to do in months seven, eight and nine. So having these pieced part portions done, if you want something to do, you can do it. You know what size they are. They are the same size as month five. There's just different numbers of them. And many times Sarah's instructions say, refer to a photo of the quilt to see the placement, to see how it works. And that is what you, I recommend that you do. So if you want to do this, if you want to wait till month 10, that's fine. Wait till month 10. But there's always a lot of people say, ooh, ooh, what can I do next? What can I do next? I know because I get emails saying, can you tell me what we're going to do in, in month 11? Um, so uh, anyway, so this is just a tip for you. If you want something extra to do, you could get started on these pieced blocks um, when, when you have time right now. Okay, so that's that one. Okay. Alrighty. Now, for next month, I want to give you a tip. The We're going to do the wide applique borders. It's those beautiful borders that have the birds on them, lots of leaves. I've, I keep remembering there were 20 leaves on each of the four borders, so that's 80 leaves and flowers and all kinds of stuff. There's a lot. So whether you're doing the applique by raw edge or turned edge or by hand or by machine, there's still a lot of work. And Sarah has broken that wide border down into three months of work, starting with July 1st with month seven. We'll do some in month seven, some in month eight, and some in month nine. One of the things that I really struggled with was figuring out which fabrics were used for which leaves. Now the fabric requirements pages tell us which fabrics you're using by the month. So that was the first thing I started with. But then I had to try to figure out where do these leaves go? And I had to keep pulling up a pattern, a picture of the pattern and blowing up the photograph and looking to see which fabric went where. And sometimes I could tell and sometimes I couldn't. So after spending hours trying to struggle with that and, and sewing the wrong leaves in the wrong place, when I realized I had the wrong ones, I didn't know. I said, I've got to, I've got to just sit down and spend the time to make a list. So for the 450 of us that are working on the kit, the month seven will list the leaves by each of the three months, exactly what the names of the fabrics are from the kit to put those on the list. I'm going to start writing that blog today because it's going to take me some time. I've got the whole list made, but I'm going to have to get that done. And um, you will find if you're, if you're one of the kit folks, you will find that that's very helpful when it, uh, how many, because I, I cut the wrong number several times, I didn't cut them, but I marked the wrong number several times. I marked twice as many as I needed of one fabric and a half as many as I needed of, as another. And I thought, okay, I've just got to uh, sit down with the fabric list and just come up with exactly what the intent was here of the fabrics. Um, so that's coming and you'll definitely want to read the blog before you start doing your fabrics um, if, you're, if you're one of the kit people. Now, the other thing is because I, and I mentioned this last month on the live, 
because I'm doing it by hand applique, I did cut the borders the exact size it said to cut them, and that's eight and a half inches wide. I don't recommend you do that, especially for hand applique, because I handled it over the, you know, think about this, you're going to handle it for three months. I had so much fraying on those long outside edges. Those are long borders. And so someone last month mentioned, well, you could cut them with a wavy blade. And that is true. And I, I was excited by that. Um, Thing. So after we got off the live last week I, or last month, I went and trimmed mine down with a, a wavy blade, but I tried to trim just a little off because I had cut them exactly the right size. And what a wavy blade looks like, this happens to be one, there's a variety of kind of wavy blades, but this is a wavy blade. And when you use it, it pinks the edge, essentially. It's a, you know, we used to use pinking shears. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about, but it makes this cute little wavy edge. And there's a lot less fraying with that. So I recommend, first of all, that you cut these borders wider than the eight and a half inches, cut them nine or so. It will be a little tricky because each of the, the top and bottom borders will include one of these adorable little stars that we just made, that we're making this month, and a, a square of fabric below it. So those are going to be sewn exact right size. And when you try to put that to a border that's wider, it's just, it just looks weird. It's a little odd, but um, I really wish that I had done that. Now, another person that I met on the, my trip to Texas, who she came up to me is um, Vanetta, and she is doing hers by machine applique. And I think I talked about this last month. She used Terriel Magic, which is a liquid stabilizer. And we sell it in the Quilt Show store. I put a link to it on my blog. And it's, it's, she had beautiful work. Her machine applique was perfect. She was doing turned edge machine applique. So she had prepped the pieces, but she had, it just looked great. And her background was stiff, but not, not stiff like a board. Cause she said, I just used a light spray on the back of her background fabric. And she was going to do the same thing on these wide borders. And I really was so impressed by her, uh, quality of what she turned out that I really wish that I had used the Terriel Magic on these and lightly sprayed on the wrong side of the background fabrics before I did the applique. So that um, you can use other stabilizers too, but the Terriel Magic is so easy to use and it's a light spray and, um, and her results were fantastic. So uh, if that's something you're thinking about, go ahead and order it now so you have it when you get the pattern instructions of the first part of the end of June, first part of July. So um, that was just really, really, really terrific. So, okay, let me go. Oh, we're running long again. Let me go see if we have any questions. Okay, where are you? Questions. Okay. Oh, here we go. All right, let me see. Do, 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 do. Back to the beginning. I never know who's here till I see this. Rochester, New York. Austin, Texas. I'm coming to. I'm coming to Austin. I'm gonna be teaching there in April next year. Beaumont, uh, Austin, and Victoria. Hi from Chile, Wisconsin, Ohio, Oakland, Tennessee. All right. Let's see if we got any questions here. San Antonio. I'd come there anytime. Melanie, get with me. Let's get you, get me down there. Uh, Terry from my buddy from Florida. Terry says she needs more months in 2023. Yep, I understand that. And all right, uh, lots of happy birthdays. Happy, yeah, Wendy Johnson. Wendy's uh, she might be the first person to say, yeah. Wendy says I look great. Thank you, Wendy. Um, effective yesterday, I'm down 80 pounds. So in in a little less than a year. So um, working on that, I got 20 more to go. Um, okay, North Carolina. How many corner squares for the small squares? Well, each star, Susan wants to know, Susan Skill, each star has four corner squares. And there are however many there are. I think there's 20 small stars. The, the blog laid it all out exactly. I want to say it's 20. So um, you just, and it, the pattern is correct for those. It tells you in there how many to make. Okay, yeah, uh, Victoria Compton, she, she's my one of my local friends here. And she loves that method for drawing the lines on the larger squares. It's so easy. And Susan, good. She's breathing again. Susan was worried. Um, so Susan, I'm sure when you showed me that picture, you put it on the forum just a little while ago and I responded to you. Um, I was pretty sure you simply had not trimmed the flying geese down to the size that they need to be. Um, okay. 
Block lock ruler for square. Yeah, um, people who love block lock rulers really love them. And I can see, I love them for the half square triangle method. That's just a neat way to go. All righty. <laughs> All righty. Well, good. Um, the um, Maritza says that she uh, really appreciates my sharing my wisdom on this project. Um, yeah, and thank you. For, well, good. It's, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've put some time into this one. Um, so. Once we become a member for $49, is a pattern free. Yes, yes, yes. The $49 buys you one year of membership and everything that goes with that, which is a brand new show every two weeks and access to 15 years of prior shows. You can't beat that. The forum, the classrooms, the everything. The bonus is we give you a wonderful block of the month pattern, which come next year when this pattern reverts, the rate rights revert back to Sarah Filkey, you'll be able to buy it from her for 50, 60 or $70, whatever she prices it at. So it is a wonderful bonus to be a star member of the quilt show and get the block of the month for free. So um, wash your hands, whatever your name is, you join us and um, you'll benefit from that too. Um, alternative choices. I try to show more than one way to do it because not every <laughs> everything. Um, good. Um, wash your hands. Says she's going to sign up. Okay. So let me go and let me get back to this one here. Good. Okay. So well, I, I've taken us to to forty minutes, and I always think I can do it in less time than that. But that's that's the way it goes. I always think that there's so much more I want to tell you. Um, I will uh, make a pitch again for the blog. One of the things that I'm doing on my blog this year is, and I only, the blog comes out on Sundays. So one Sunday a month each month started last month and going forward to the end of this year, I'm doing what I'm calling Sunday sales. And I'm getting rid of uh, some excess stuff that I absolutely know that I don't need. Last month I did wonderful fabric bundles. One of the things I think I'm really good at is putting fabrics together that make really wonderful quilts. And I love doing that um, um, and putting, helping students select fabrics and then they have to buy them if they like them. I don't have to buy them. I just have to put them together so they look great. And anyway, so I have a few of those left. That was in Sunday sales for last month. And then uh, last week, the Sunday sales was garment fabric. I found these wonderful hand-painted linen cotton fabrics that I had bought. A lot of them came from Wendy Richardson, who used to vend at all these wonderful shows that we had. A wonderful, wonderful fabric. I was going to make jackets and garments and tops and all this kind of stuff. And um, there's a few of those available still. So, um, but I'm going to be selling off some of my best books that I have multiple copies of because they're so good. And I'm going to put those up. That'll, that'll be coming up. Uh, I'm going to sell some quilt tops. And here's a big tip, a big uh, getting ahead. And I know you're working on this, so you don't want to buy mine. But that quilt behind me, when it's done in December, I'm going to sell that top. I am not going to finish it. I'm not going to um, either pay someone else to quilt it or quilt it myself. Um, I am. I look at that and I go, that's a year and a half of my life. It's hand applique I'll probably never do again. I love Garden Party Down Under from last year and that I have a, that is spectacular. And we, we did that and I did all the quilting on that myself. Um, I just know that I need to be, I'm going, it won't be too long from now. I'll be starting on our block of the month for next year getting that going. So this one, when I get this top done, uh, it's going to be late in the year um, before we get done. That's going to be for sale. I'll still talk to you about how to quilt it and I'll show up details that we have of Sarah's and how it was quilted. Um, but that's just a tip right now that that one's going to be for sale. So anyway, uh, that's enough. The next live is scheduled for Friday, June the 30th. That's our 4th of July weekend for a lot of us. I didn't want to wait till the following Friday, which would be July the 7th, because by then almost everybody would have cut their border fabrics not as wide as I recommend. So I'm trying to get ahead of some of you. Um, anyway, so that's June the 30th. Please, please, please post on the forum. Show us what you're doing. Ask your questions there. I check several times a day, every day, seven days a week to answer your questions as promptly as I can. So that's the place to ask questions or through my blog. I get a lot of questions that way too. So uh, until next time, that's a wrap.